What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of 90 Day Fiance The Other Way, Season 6, Episode 14, Reality Frights. So this was another filler episode. Not much happened, so let's hurry up and get through this so that we can go on and do more productive things with our night. So Shekinah and Sarper. Is anybody really surprised that Shekinah moved back in with Sarper? She claims that because he threw away his bottles that represent all the women that he's been with or some of the women that he's been with, and because he threw away the, the little black book where he was keeping a tally of all the women that he slept with, she thinks that he is showing progress. Okay. Because he threw those away, and um whatever threw the bottles away burnt the book she's like well you know he is showing progress so i'm going to give him another chance so she moves back in with him she barely got her suitcase open when she caught him in a lie he she asked him have you been going to therapy or something to that effect and he says that he has booked an appointment and he'll start and so she kind of was confused because she knows that if she, if uh, sarpa really did book an appointment with a therapist he would have told her right away he probably would have had her on a three-way call with the uh, with the therapist making the appointment because he would have been so excited to prove to her that he's doing the right thing so she found it very suspicious that he didn't tell her so she kind of grills him on that and he finally fesses up and says no i did not make an appointment with a the therapist in his confessional he talks about how men in turkey they don't do therapy and it's like something that you don't broadcast and it's very personal and private when you do decide to go to therapy so whatever so she's upset with him that he lied she hasn't even sat down yet um and he's already lied he's already lying to her but we all know what the game is with Shekinah and Sarper. They're just here for clout. They're just here for fame and money. I don't know if they're in cahoots with the producers of 90 Day Fiance um, to do these fake storylines just for them to be on camera or if they think that they're also fooling the producers as well. I don't know what's going on, but we all see right through Shekinah and Sarper. I think that they might be a real couple, but they're just in cahoots trying to get on this show uh, to build their fame and to get money. I don't believe anything going on with Shekinah and Sarper because it's just, it, I mean, there's a, a real woman would not move back in with a guy like Sarper. Unless, I don't know, you're possibly a sex addict or something. I, I don't understand why she would move back in with Sarper. Um, he's proven time and time and time and time again that he will not change, that he's emotionally abusive, that he's extremely controlling. And she kind of says something about how she likes it when a man takes control, but she's still an independent, a strong, independent woman, and she's going to voice her opinion, and, you know, Sarper doesn't like that. So... I don't even know what else to say because to analyze Shekinah and Sarper would mean that I would have to take them for face value. And I don't, I think that, like I said, that they are conspiring against the show or they're in cahoots with the producers to be on this show. And I think that 90 day fiance, they will forever and, and ever continue to try to force Shekinah and Sarper down our throats. They're not that interesting because we know that they're fake. Their whole life, their storyline, everything about them is fake. So they're not that interesting, but it's like they're the golden couple and we're not gonna be able to get rid of them. It's gonna be 90 day fiance before the 90 days. It's gonna be 90 day fiance the other way. It's gonna be 90 day fiance happily ever after. And then if they do have a pretend breakup, they're both gonna be on 90 day fiance the single life. I am sick and tired of Shekinah and Sarper because I don't think that they're real and they're out here wasting everybody's time. I'm not even going to go into any more detail about what happened with their segment because it really doesn't matter. So they're still together, y'all. Moving on to Josh and Lily. This one, things kind of got interesting for me. So Josh's brother, Jared, comes to visit him in China. And Lily and Jared already have a relationship because Lily tells us that when she was in the United States, uh, to see Josh, um, she met Jared and they kind of already developed like a brother-in-law, sister-in-law relationship. And she says that she confides a lot in Jared whenever her and Josh have their marital issues. So 
they give him a tour of the house. He's really impressed with the house. And Josh has a chance to talk to his brother alone. And he talks to his brother about his relationship with Lily, how it has a lot of ups and downs and how they're constantly fighting. So Josh is hoping that his brother will be able to give some brotherly advice to help him with his marriage. Later on, they all three go out to, uh, they're on their way to a night market. And on their way there, Lily brings up their marital issues. And at first, Josh tries to stop her from going down that road because he's like, hey, let's just enjoy tonight. You know, my brother is here visiting. Let's not bring up anything too heavy. Let's just enjoy the night. And I'm thinking to myself, but you yourself had also brought up your marital issues to your brother. So like, why are you getting on her about it? I, I, I didn't understand that. Maybe it's different when it's brother to brother. But then like when, you know, Lily wants to talk about it, it's like a whole different thing. And all of a sudden she's ruining the night so which she did so um lily complains about josh the night before her and josh were out at dinner and he had his phone out and he was texting so when she asked him who are you texting he quickly put his phone away so that made her really upset like he's hiding something josh says that you know they weren't really talking during dinner there was no conversation so he decided to text his family because he knew that his brother was going to be arriving the following day so to him it was like he didn't understand why she would get so upset so they go on and on about other things and then lily brings up the fact that the dinner cost 500 um, i'm assuming 500 yen and so then josh gets upset that she's once again bringing up money and he tells his brother who's sitting in the back seat this is where she always does she's always trying to like you know belittle me because i don't have any money and i'm not working and she's always talking about how much things are costing and what she pays for and lily said i know that you can't Came from poor people <laughs> and so I understand that you don't have money I've known this since day one and so I have no interest in your money and so then it's like well why are you to continue to bring it up then Lily if you know that he came from poor people and he has no money why do you constantly bring up the money that you're spending on him I don't know what she's trying to do with that and also he had told his brother earlier that he literally cannot work because he doesn't have documentation yet to work to get a job in china i think lily thought that maybe he had saved enough um to come to china so that his she, maybe she thought that his savings account was like really fat and that he should be contributing more financially because he was working and earning an income before he came to China. I think that's what her issue is. I don't think she's expecting him to work. I think that she just had this impression that he was preparing himself for this trip and that he would have a lot of money saved up. So they're going back and forth and the look on Jared's face while they are arguing shows how extremely uncomfortable he is. I'm pretty sure he just wanted the door to fly open and for him just to fly out um, out of that car instead of being in there with them as they were, because their argument went full throttle. Um, <laughs> it went past trying to be, you know, polite in front of Jared, like they were going at it. And so um, at the end of it all, Josh turns to Lily and says, um, thank you for ruining my brother's night. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, and Lily did mention that ever since Josh arrived in China, all they've been doing is arguing. And I don't know where this relationship is going to go because this relationship has a lot of problems, starting from the intimacy issues and then going to their financial problems and um, the arguments. They're very nitpicky with one another. I don't know where this relationship is going. Um, I think it's too early to say that he needs to come back to America. They just need to grow up. They both need to take accountability and they need to just try to, you know, be more mature about it and make the necessary changes. Lily, stop talking about money. Okay. If you are having an issue with the lack of funds that he has, then like go be with somebody else, go be with a millionaire, go be with a man with money. And, um, Josh, like what is going on in the intimacy department? If she ain't doing it, like, what is really going on? Is it her? Is it you? Like what's going on there? Let's move on to Statler and Dempsey. So they are finally off the damn ferry, y'all. This was a two to three episode ferry ride. I'm so glad that they're off the ferry. So they're back in the van and they're talking about their issues, you know, Statler's anxiety and Dempsey's telling her, you know, I was just trying to help you. And Statler said, well, when I get like that, I just need you to leave me alone. And 
Dempsey's like, I'm not going to leave you alone if you're going to be rude about it. If you're going to talk to me crazy, I'm going to talk to you crazy too. I don't care what you're going through. So finally, Statler apologizes and says, I'm really sorry for how I behaved on the ferry. Okay, fine. So they arrive in Paris. They're both in much better spirits. Um, Statler seems like she's really trying to enjoy herself now. They even go and get a character draw caricature drawing of themselves. And while they're getting this done, they bring up their relationship and Dem Statler asks Dempsey so what do you see this relationship going like what is your end goal with us and Dempsey says marriage I want to get married and I want to get married you know soon and um Statler was like I want to get married too but not you know as soon as you so Statler tells us that she wants to wait a while before they finally decide to make that decision of getting married she says that you know they've gone through some challenges recently and so she needs to kind of see exactly where this relationship is going to go is it strong enough to survive and can it possibly end in marriage so she's not as quick to go into that as much as Dempsey is let's talk about Inky and Corona like I said this is a filler episode y'all not much is going on so Inky and Corona decide to go for a cold plunge where you run into the water and the water is like at freezing level it's at 25 degrees not quite at freezing but damn near close to it and you run in there with just your bathing suit on so of course Inky's used to it he just you know dives right in no big deal of course corona she's not used to it she says you know black people don't do this we don't jump into a lake of freezing water so she does um she does play a good sport and she does go into the water but for like a quick second and then she ran back out okay fine it was cute so then they go into a hot tub and they start talking about um corona's future in iceland and she tells inky that she went to go talk to the program director at the midwife school that she wants to apply for and they told her that she's going to have to wait like two and a half years before she can apply because there's a lot of issues she doesn't speak the language she missed her deadline etc so when she told inky this inky was like okay well maybe you can get a job just as a regular nurse just go to regular nursing school um until you're able to reapply again and corona was upset that inky was not as devastated and um you know like not showing any type of emotion as she was so she felt like he should have been like oh my god corona lord have mercy what are we gonna do life is over for us but he was just like okay well let's just move on to plan b and i didn't see anything wrong with that i saw nothing wrong with that at all so i didn't understand why she was upset and then she says in her confessional she says you know it feels like i am more into this relationship than he is yeah duh it's been like that since day one this is episode 14 y'all and we have yet to see any chemistry between these two this is episode 14. This is episode 14, and they still don't look like a real couple to me. They look like, you know, friends who barely know each other. So I don't know if they're also playing the Shekinah and um, Sarper game where, you know, they're a fake couple and they're just here for fame and clout and money. I don't know, but I'm not feeling it between um corona and inky i'm not feeling it at all and i didn't understand why she was upset because him not caring would have been like okay what's for dinner but instead he was giving her options he was like okay no biggie you know you can still stay in iceland he didn't tell her well okay go back to america then he didn't tell her he wasn't like that at all he was just like okay why don't you just do something else while you're waiting to reapply and she didn't like that so i don't i don't know exactly what she wants i don't know if this was fake anger fake drama y'all i don't know what the hell's going on but one thing i do know for sure is that i'm done with this review thank you so much for joining me i really do appreciate it on your way out please don't forget to rate the video if you like this content subscribe to my channel and i'll definitely talk to you later bye